This right here is the 360 Robot Vacuum Cleaner S10. So it has LiDAR, but you can see the top of it, it doesn't have that typical little spinning tower there at the top with the sensor in it. That's because the LiDAR in this model here is internal. It also has cameras and 3D precision mapping and obstacle avoidance. So that means it can see things like shoes and socks and go around them. And like other vacuums I've tested out, it actually does work in this particular model. So it does have a mopping mode too as well, which I have attached here to the bottom. And the water tank capacity in this is 500 milliliters. The dustbin capacity is 520 milliliters, and it does have a runtime on the lower power settings of up to three hours. The maximum suction performance is 3,300 PA. And in this review, I'll be going over the build quality, the design, application, do some tests with it to see just how well it cleans, and my overall opinions of using now the 360 S10. And first let's have a look at what we get inside the box. So two microfiber cloths, user manual, then you have the S10 vacuum charging station, and right here we get a lot of plugs, so that means it can be used all around the world. So you can see UK, US, and Eurostar, even Australia, New Zealand plug there. That's great and our power supply, so that's what plugs into the dock, and you simply just slot the plugs in right there. Under the vacuum you'll then find this, which is the attachment here for our mopping mode. So these clip onto the underneath, and the way they are attached is just using Velcro there to hold the microfiber cloth in place. First thing you notice with the S10 is it doesn't have that tower in the middle. It's a little bit shorter than other models because it doesn't have the external light out or that laser on the top spinning around with the motor, it's internal now. So with the front and the sides and the front camera too for obstacle avoidance. So we've got our power on button. This button here is to go back to the dock. Lifting up this, we gain access to our dustbin. 500 milliliters is the capacity. We have our brush with a built-in knife. That's to clean the hair out of the main brush on the underside of it. So just simply lifting up here, you can pull out that dustbin. Now this dustbin here, you've got a simple button that when you press it, all the contents will then drop out into your bin, so very easy to empty it. Gaining access to the filter is easy, you simply just need to lift up here. There it is, there's a little tab, you can pull it out and wash that, and right inside there, there is this first layer. So that fine mesh stops the filter from clogging up too quickly. Underside of the vacuum now, so we have the two suspended wheels either side. Now they can handle climbs of up to two centimeters, the main brush is not suspended, so it will not move up and down at all, but there is a little bit of give and play right here, as you can see with the base part of it. To gain access to that main brush, you simply push in those two tabs, lift it up, and there's this little clip on the side, and then you can remove that for cleaning and replacement. Eventually they do wear out, of course. So down with firing sensors, we've got three right here, and another three, so six in total there to detect any drop, so it won't go down any stairs. Two charging contacts right there, 360 degree wheel, side brush, and then three little jets here where it does control the water pressure for the mop. And then the mop, to insert it, you simply just slot it in like so, it's in place. There's a little bit of movement to it, so that means it will have full contact with the ground. So the sensor along the front here, that's our LiDAR. There is a camera right here, and it has that typical SLAM sensor. Not that it should have to use that quite a bit because of this AI powered 3D vision. The camera here at the front for obstacle avoidance. It should detect items and go around them and not bump into them. On our right here, we've got another camera and the sensor there to measure the distance to the wall. And that helps aid that side brush for getting right into the corners. The water tank is located at the back. It has a 520 milliliter capacity. So you simply pull on the tab here, it comes out, and there's this tab right here that we pull on, and that is where you fill it up. Then of course there is an application, it's called 360 Robot, you download that onto your mobile, you do need to create an account, and once you're in it, you go through the process of adding it and connecting up the vacuum to your wireless router. So here we have a map of just part of my lower floor here, and you can see it has labelled all of the rooms. It has automatically even detected carpet right here, and it's done a good job of getting that size pretty much spot on to how large that matters, the carpet there compared to the room. So there's a lot of options that we can set. So we can set, for example, certain zones or rooms to be vacuumed twice, certain areas to be vacuumed twice. 
or mopped twice too as well. Now we'll automatically detect carpets as mentioned, but that means when it's mopping, it won't go over the carpets, which is what we want. We don't want it dragging the mop over the carpet that uh, it could be well, a recipe for disaster there. You can adjust the areas, tweak and edit everything, and we do have the whole floor modes too as well. So that means we can have a basement, a first floor, second floor, you get the idea, you can have separate maps for those and edit them. So this is the 3D map that you can go into too as well. There's a 3D mode and you can have a look. That's that room there with the map. And yeah, it looks like these walls up here, there isn't. That's just something I think that's in the way and it's just the way that's handled it. And toolbox, a lot of different options in here that we can tweak. So we do have our map rebuilding, schedule, voice package, radio control mode, various different settings, and firmware updates are pushed through. So I need to update it again before I continue on with my final tests of this. And I just show you in settings a lot of other things that we can change in here too. So if you don't want the automatic detection of carpet power to be increased when it goes over carpets, you can disable that. You can even disable the full sensors, full protection mode. Don't know why you would want to do that. That stops it from tumbling downstairs, for example. But a lot of settings and a lot of options there with the application. Now let's get on to how it cleans. So it's very similar to others that have the 360 degree LiDAR. So that laser distance mapping. So LiDAR mapping on this one is internal, so you don't see it. That means it can get under beds a lot easier, under other spots, which other robot vacuums wouldn't be able to do. So it gets nice and close to the edges. And of course it will go around the outside of everything first before then zigzagging up and down and cleaning as they always do. Now just how loud is it? Well, what I'll do now is give you a sample. First it will be on the quiet setting, standard, and then I'll cycle up to powerful, to then maximum output, which is that 3,300 PA. So hard floors, it really did quite a good job. Getting in around the furniture, no problems. Anywhere that there was any muck down, it would sweep that up. Even on the standard setting, I was really quite surprised with the results of the dustbin, even though we'd cleaned with another robot vacuum, a different brand, only a few days before. This certainly picked up a lot of muck. But what about carpets? So I did a test here where I put down a lot of rice, dry cereal, some dust, a bit of cat fur, and all sorts of muck all over the big mat that I have downstairs. And over the first pass, it picked up quite a bit, but the second pass, did quite a good job in collecting up all of the rice and all the muck and it only left just one little tiny piece that I could really see behind. So excellent results on cleaning mats and carpets. But that's a short pile carpet. Now where I did see that this S10 was struggling was some areas, especially when you've got a hard floor, then the mat on the top. That distance there between the mat and the floor, inside there, it had a bit of trouble getting all the muck out of that, probably because of the suction power. These robot vacuums is not as powerful as, of course, a plug-in normal vacuum. It's one of their weaknesses, and I've seen that happen too with other vacuums. Now, the main brush isn't suspended, it's fixed, and that did sometimes cause that on some big mats, it to jump up and down a little bit, depending on how it was getting the contact with it. Now, there's a little bit of movement in the outside around that brush, which does help, but the main brush you had fixed on this one. So then hard floors, I did a hard floor test. I spilled a bit of coffee everywhere and you would normally mop this up straight away, but I decided to just leave it there for three hours. I let it set, I let it dry, I added even a bit more coffee to it. So a very stubborn stain and I thought that, well, it's not gonna be able to do this, is it? Shouldn't be able to clean it all off because it's just a microfiber cloth and a bit of water that it's pulling over the top of it, wiping it, right? But I was surprised to see that after the second pass, it actually did here a very good job. You can see there was one little mark that was left behind. That was one of the more stubborn, really caked on, dried bit of coffee there. But the rest of it, it actually cleaned it up. And then doing the rest of the house, all the hard floors, the results do speak for themselves. That when you look at that mop cloth and you see the dirt on it and the mark, that it actually is picking up quite a bit. And if you keep doing this all the time, you'll maintain your floors a lot cleaner and you'll have to do that big, around with your manual mopping, you'd have to do that a lot less, of course. 
What about obstacle avoidance? Because this is one of the big things that they market with the S10 here. Well, I was surprised to see that it did an excellent job, much better than other brands I have tested out when it comes to obstacle avoidance. So it went around shoes and a sock, not a problem. It left it there and you could see with the map two that navigated all around it. And it might've pushed it a couple of times, but then it definitely knew that, hey, that's something to avoid. And I was really surprised to see a cable that I left that it didn't end up eating it. Most of the robot vacuums would just plow over it and they get hungry. They love to eat and tangle themselves up in USB cables, uh, which are the worst, by the way, for robot vacuums. If you're an owner, you'll know what I'm talking about. However, it wasn't foolproof. Out of three attempts, one of the attempts, so it's one out of three times there, it did end up eating a USB cable. So not 100% foolproof, but still the best I have seen with obstacle avoidance. So all up, I think the performance we get and then the application with so many features on it, how you can set the no-go zones and they're not limited to just squares or rectangles. You can really get triangles in there and all sorts of zones and areas set up. You can set, for example, the kitchen to be mopped twice, other areas that are more dirty to go over and vacuum it twice again. It is really quite fully featured. You've got the schedule and all those other modes in there. You've got the voice feedback too with the vacuum. So for example, with the mop, when I remove that, you'll hear the voice right now. Oh, no, it's falling asleep. Okay, it's turned itself off, that's Water why. Water tank has been removed. Exiting there. mopping mode. There we go. That's the feedback you always get from it. And of course you can customize, change that in various different languages. So overall, I am really pleased with the vacuuming performance. The mopping performance is a lot better than I expected. And especially that obstacle avoidance. Very good. It's supposed to be able to avoid dog poop as well, but I didn't test that one. You can imagine why. No, I'm not going to risk it. I don't want to have that smeared around everywhere. And besides, I don't have a dog. I've got a cat, Vera, and well, she does her business elsewhere and you never see it. So very good vacuum here. I do like it. So thank you so much for watching my review here of the 360 S10 robot vacuum cleaner with LiDAR navigation and obstacle avoidance.